court sentenced uh, James Pilsticker to seven and a half years in the penitentiary, assessed more than $21 million in uh, restitution, more than a million dollars in personal taxes. Uh, we believe that justice was served today uh, and that the citizens of Tulsa can feel comfortable that uh, he's been punished uh, adequately for the crimes that he committed. I think today's sentencing really demonstrates our focus and our desire to aggressively pursue employment tax violations. You know, employment tax violations, they, um, they not only cause harm to the government and, and as a result of a tax loss, but they actually hurt the employees. They cause a hardship to employees and actually can affect their future Social Security benefits. So we believe it's important to pursue these types of charges like we did in this case. the facts, uh, but we respect Judge Purcell's decision. He had a very difficult case in front of him, and we certainly respect it. We hope that this signals uh, a new chapter in Doug's life and the end of an old chapter, and we hope that you and the media and the public can uh, find a way in your heart to forgive and move on and, uh, and turn this into a positive. So that's what we're going to do. That's what Doug's been doing for the last six years. Thanks Doug, all. you that's talked that's a lot about it. So what you just saw right there was Doug Peel Sticker, Pile Sticker, Peel Sticker, uh, leaving court. Okay, this was a while ago, uh, but he was the former CEO of Arrow Trucking out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, what he did was he didn't pay payroll taxes, and he had over eleven million dollars in inflated invoices to uh, that he sent to the Transportation Alliance Bank. Now, what he did was lied about how much money he had versus how much he was spending. Why? Because he was spending that money on himself. What ended up happening was the company closed its doors. They had nothing left, nothing at all. Drivers were left stranded on the road. Their trucks were being towed at truck stops, leaving them behind. Now, I wasn't around when all of this stuff happened. I'm not very familiar with that entire case. All I know is what's online and what's in the facts. I do know that it does say at different numerous places that other companies and other drivers stood up to help the aero trucking drivers that were stranded to help get them home or get them to hotels, things like that, which is amazing. Now this man went from being a millionaire, living in a $1.3 million mansion, a Bentley, a huge wedding with over a thousand guests, spending $70,000 on a painting for his wife, I mean, listen, you're doing all this, but you're not paying your taxes. You're inflating your invoices. Big question is Celadon next. Currently, Celadon is one of the major carriers in North America. Celadon's currently at risk from being removed from the New York Stock Exchange. Bad news when you're that big. Their stock dropped as low as $1.30 a share. It since went up $1.00. By the time I'm make, at the time I'm making this video, it's at two dollars and twenty cents a share. Now over a year ago, it was upwards of ten, eleven in that in that range. If you do the math, so far this year, it's a seventy percent drop. I already see the, the tides changing for them. They're closing a facility in Battleboro, North Carolina. Celadon has its hands in a lot of different things, like most major carriers. All of this is happening, the stock drop and everything, because a company called uh, PPRG, which is a uh, research group, uh, released an extremely uh, bad report on Celadon, stating that the firm uh, and the firm is alleging that Celadon inflated its reported tangible book value by more than 95 percent. It's also been released that the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, is investigating the whole deal. And by doing this, of course, someone is responsible, and I'm sure they'll find out who. But the next steps could be that Cel Celadon will run out of liquidity and file for bankruptcy. Now, more than likely, they'll either file bankruptcy or the SEC and their creditors, Celadon's creditors, will call on the company to restate years of financial statements, which could result in potential fines and even criminal prosecution. 
I'll link some of these stories where I got this information in the description below so that you can go and check them out and make your own decision on what you think. I think it's great to start a discussion about it, and I think it's great to give everyone a heads up because we might be dealing with another aero trucking where we have thousands of drivers stranded on the road across the country. Because if a country can't pay its in, or if a company can't pay its insurance because it's bankrupt or they don't have any money, then their motor carrier numbers, DOT numbers, their insurance, everything goes away. So you have drivers with trucks at truck stops that can't go anywhere. So what happens? Banks and creditors send tow trucks after those trucks, regardless of who's in them. That we can always say is more than likely 90% of the time history repeats itself. Somebody will try what someone else tried before. With that being said, it looks like myself and other drivers out here on the road have a responsibility and a duty to help one another if this should so occur. So my advice, be on the lookout. If you're a Celadon driver, you might want to start looking for a different job because this is just starting to unfold and you never know how messy it's going to get. So listen, to all of you Celadon drivers, quality lease, lease holders, yes, quality leasing, it's a Celadon deal. Hey, check this out. Do your due diligence, protect yourself and protect your family by doing your research. Understand what's going on within your company and all of the assets that they hold.